Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com In this video we are going to be looking at the Chiller Oil Lubrication System. Now as the name might suggest, this system pushes the lubrication oil around the chiller to prevent the machine from wear and tear. If you can imagine, there is a large amount of friction in the bearings and the drive transmission, so these surfaces need to be cooled and lubricated to minimize friction and make the machine last longer. Now the first part in this system is the oil sump pump chamber and that looks something like this. In the real world it looks uh, something like this and you'll see these mounted to the side of uh, many centrifugal chillers and these sumps are full of oil. Inside them is a small submersible pump. There is also an electrical heater in them with a temperature probe as well and this heater is usually one to two kilowatts in size and the purpose of this heater is to obviously heat the oil up if, if it's too cold if the oil is cold then it's going to have a low viscosity so the heater will come on and heat that oil up uh, to make sure that it's a, a, a low viscosity sorry high viscosity and that will ensure that the oil flows across all the surfaces inside the chiller for instance if the chiller has been off for some time maybe due to a power cut or it's been disconnected then the oil will have cooled down so this heater will bring the temperature of the oil back up quickly as it circulates it around. Now the sump pump sucks up the oil inside this submersible unit and it pushes it, the oil off to a small plate heat exchanger. Now in the real world the heat exchanger will look something like this and it's usually mounted very close to the side of the, uh, the sump unit. It could alternatively be a shell and tube type um, as you can see here so this is the heat exchanger uh, on a slightly different style of chiller but in essence it's the same it's just a different uh, fluid going in into the cooler so the heat exchanger is provided cooling um, and that's usually by the uh, refrigerant or it could also be a water cooled as well but either way that flows into the heat exchanger um, passes through there and takes any excess heat away and then recirculates that off to be disposed of. The sump pump then sucks up that oil and pushes it onto the other side of the heat exchanger. That then makes its way through the plate heat exchanger, uh, transferring any thermal excess thermal energy it doesn't require and uh, making its way off up into the top of the compressor unit. You notice the uh, there's a temperature and pressure sensor on this line as well. That's very important as the chiller will not be allowed to start uh, until the temperature and pressure in that line have met the required set point. Now when the uh, oil reaches the top here it passes usually into an oil filter and this will just take away uh, any foreign objects which have made the way into the oil uh, to stop that getting through and entering into the gears. The oil will then leave the oil filter. I've just put a section view here so you can see inside the chiller uh, to better understand how that oil is distributed. The oil will then typically run into a reservoir. Now the reservoir acts as a bit of a buffer vessel so it can allow a, a few branches to come off of this but also uh, in the event of an emergency shutdown you've still got some oil left in this reservoir which will provide oil to the essential parts which need the cooling and lubrication for a short duration but enough um, but enough to allow the chiller to come to a complete halt uh, while oil is still being provided to the frictional surfaces. From the reservoir the oil is usually sprayed as a fine mist over the uh, the gears there, or the drive transmission and that's just to ensure that all the surfaces are coated evenly. The oil then collects in the base there and that oil is then drained and pass back to the top of the sump unit. Now the bearings and the, the thrust bearings here are usually provided oil as a high pressure um, connection and that's to force the, uh, the oil into all the gaps to ensure everything is covered inside. If it was a spread with a mist it, it's just not going to reach the surfaces so for these bearings they have to be pressure. Uh, the oil has to be provided by pressure. 
So this oil is then collected from the bearings and the frost bearings uh, and fed back into the top of the T branch for the plate heat exchanger. So obviously all that heat that is picked up um, from these bearings uh, will be sent straight back and through the plate heat exchanger to get rid of that heat and push that into the cooling circuit. Now if you have vane control valves on your chiller then sometimes these are um, pressurized from this oil system and there'll be a vane controller connected to this uh, with a high, high and low pressure side and this will change and alternate the position of the vanes but not all chillers have this, some are electronically controlled and motor controlled so this, the, this may not be on the chiller um, you're looking at. This oil is then collected and that is uh, joins back to the, the main reservoir and pushed back into the sump. Now as that was being passed around uh, there's a chance that there's some refrigerant has entered into this so uh, at the top of the sump we've also got a vent there and that allows the any refrigerant that has made its way into this to be vented and goes back off into the compressor to be fed in and go back and complete the refrigeration cycle. So this oil system uh, is, should generally be checked at least once per year and the oil is checked uh, just to make sure there's no obviously metal um, accumulating in there which would indicate that there is a fault and that your, your gears are probably wearing and it, it may require an oil change as well. The pump inside this, um, the submersible pump inside the chamber here, um, that's probably going to be less than one, ki one, um, one kilowatt and one horsepower. Probably, you know, around one horsepower, maybe uh, 700 watts. It, it's not so big. It could be bigger though, it, it kind of depends on the size of the chiller, obviously. But that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share the video and any questions please leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out our website, Facebook and Twitter and Google+. Thanks for watching.